Happy Sunday, risers. We're back with another round of hashtag rising cues where we answer your questions. So let's see what we have first. All right. Uh, Biden was never serious about doing anything substantive on student debt. He was essential to making it impossible to dismiss it in bankruptcy. My question, what led to the myth that Biden would actually do anything about it? Oh, people just have faith and they're gullible, I guess. That's what my, you know, people hope their political leaders are actually going to do something and and then they don't. Well, I think the answer to it probably is he, that he claimed he would. The, I, the answer to the question where people got the idea, <laughs> the that, idea that he would, that he would right. do it is that he said he would do it. Uh, and I think, and we talked about this at the show yesterday, I think uh, the politics of inflation are, are doing to the progressive left project uh, now what they did to the project in the 70s and 80s. And I think there's a capital strike going on where our, you, you saw meat producers the other day, dry, you know, seeing record profits and driving up prices. Rental car companies are seeing record profits. These are not mm -hmm. companies that are scraping by and raising prices just to meet rising costs. Th these are companies that are, I think, manipulating prices northward so that it will have a political effect. They want people upset about high prices so that they take it out on Biden and so that Biden then enacts what they think are deflationary policies, such as letting the child tax credit expire, not doing uh, student debt forgiveness, uh, and otherwise whacking away at the working class. And so working class, uh, for its frustrations, will probably get lower prices, but will also get you know, wages and other benefits that were coming their way slashed. Yeah, I, I, they must calculate that there's also not a huge political upside That's to doing point. it. That's exactly right. Yeah, and yeah. And, and it's it's the capital strike that is creating the that those political realities. So yeah. I guess good on the capitalists for you know, making, I mean impressive work. But you try to do even the tiniest thing, and you're and you're confronted instantaneously by the power of capital in this country. Mm -hmm. All right, I love this uh, this name of this uh, question submitter, Grandpa Caligula Milk Toast Milk Zeitgeist. That's uh, that's pretty good. Milk Toast Zeitgeist. Yeah. <laughs> All Crazy. right. The next question is, how does Robbie? Oh, that's me. Find the time for reason, rising, and playing Ronzi on Letterkenny. What is Letterkenny? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a show. I don't watch it. Um, oh, you must look like this person must look, look like the dude on it. I'm going to see if this is uh, fair. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I look like this dude. Uh, 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 actually, I, I, I once at an event in D.C. was confused for Ronan Farrow. A reporter for The Washington Post came up to me and started interviewing me as if I was Ronan Farrow. You I was very tempted it. to say, I think this whole Me Too thing is very overblown. What about due process? Uh, sorry, Ronan. <laughs> Uh, no, I did not do that. Uh, my first journalism gig was for the Michigan Daily, the student newspaper at the University of Michigan. That was uh, when I first decided, I always wanted to be a writer. That was when I decided I wanted to be in journalism. Uh, it was a like far, far, far to the left paper. It was like Ryan plus more to the left. Um, so, the, and I was a libertarian as I am today, but uh, it was a good experience writing like the editorials. I was on the opinion page, so I had to write like the editorials as if I was some Marxist socialist revolutionary. So it's, you, you learn a lot yeah. when you're writing in a different person's voice, so. And mine was at uh, Washington City Paper, which is like the alt weekly for DC. I, I was already 28, so I got into journalism pretty late. Uh, what did you do yeah. before that? What were you doing before that? Uh, I worked in a middle school for two years. Um, as a teacher? I, no, I worked as a mentor, a therapeutic mentor for emotionally disturbed kids. It was actually my own oh. middle school on the Eastern Shore. So I would like go oh. to class with middle school kids and try to keep them from uh, misbehaving in class. And then afterwards, we'd go fishing. It was like oh. probably the best job that, that I ever had. I was a, a, a pot lobbyist, a state level pot lobbyist. <laughs> right, right out of college, I worked for this mobbed up, corrupt, uh, uh, chop, what's called a chop shop. It's like this bunch of stock jockeys in a boiler room selling stocks. Like, oh, wow. To, so that was, that was 2000. Um, Interesting. Got a, I got it past the Series 7, 63. So there might even be people using, like, we would use other people's licenses to trade stocks. It was totally corrupt. First article I ever wrote was an expose of that place, um, which, was, which was, like I said, it was mobbed up. And one of the people there was like, 
you realize they're probably going to kill you <laughs> if you write this. But I was like 22. I'm like, wow. no, nobody, no, Gee. that's not going to happen. You've lived life, Ryan. Uh, and grad school in the middle of that. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Well, a lot I came of, out lot of, of a lot of bartending and waiting tables and that sort of thing in the middle. Yeah. I did a lot of that, too, but I came out of alternative rock radio. My first gig in media, entertainment type, um, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, was radio. I come out of radio, so my first gig was actually an alternative rock radio DJ. Wow. Don't I seem like a rocker chick for you? You do <laughs> kind of, yeah. That's, 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 that's believable. Could, yeah. could totally see that. Yeah. I mean, so I, yeah. I have no real life experience. I've just been, just been, a, just been a journalist funded <laughs> person for... Uh, for uh, for my entire adult life, um, yeah. And finally, uh, rising cues. Where is the U.S. climate action plan? What actions are we taking right now? Unless there are rapid, immediate, uh, and large scale reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius will be beyond reach. That's from August 2021 IPCC. That was five months ago. Uh, the, the climate is right now in the in the U.S. is in the hands of Joe Manchin and Joe Biden, who are uh, negotiating what would be the largest uh, climate legislative package ever produced, I think, by any country, and would also be sh you know significantly short of what is needed to stay under 1.5 de degrees. Uh, the best mm -hmm. hope for it is that it, it that it does pass as is, that Manchin doesn't kill it. Uh, and that it then serves as as competitive inspiration for the rest of the world that sees that we're, that we are headed in this direction, which creates which creates markets. Uh, and you're seeing, you know, China's their their consumption of electric vehicles is through the roof. Um, mm -hmm. if, if, but if they keep you know if they keep powering them with coal plants, it doesn't quite uh, that doesn't quite do it. Yeah. Oh, and uh, so yeah. the jam band one. What's your, who's your, my, I got to go with, I guess, the Grateful Dead. I mean, I was going to say fish, but. You can't. Oh, fish. I love I mean, fish. You guys you are big, I'm not even a music person. I don't have like a favorite. Well, uh, fish is uh, Kim in my generation is fish. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we're all <laughs> like, about fish. The 90s. Yeah. And two th I mean, they're still yeah. going. They, they, they have toured longer than the Grateful Dead, actually. How many how many Grateful Dead concerts have you seen? Ryan? Well, I never saw them uh, yeah. while Jerry was alive. Okay. Uh, I was I remember where I was when he died. Um, I've since then I've seen the enormous number of fish and uh, other one or dead a or whatever. Fish is the one you were saying you've seen a, right. like a yeah. gazillion yeah. concerts of. I remember you saying that. Well, fish fish kind of had that same following. You know that same yeah. sort of like Grateful Dead style following. People would get into their Volkswagen buses and they would like follow fish around. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good time. What was your favorite concert, Kim? Uh, you know, I mean, um, my favorite concert, I, I want to say actually uh, the best concert I've ever been to was, I mean, I could give you like a really lame answer, like MC Hammer. That was really good. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I was in the fifth grade. It was awesome. The hammer <laughs> pants and the big hammers on the he stage. He was a big deal then. <laughs> He was a really big deal, and that was my first concert, and so, of course, it's nostalgic for me. But Steve Miller Band is also a really great band to see live. Um, but, yeah, so, but but Fish is a, another great one. You know, it's a festival-like. You go out there. My first car that I learned to drive in, actually, was a Volkswagen bus, so I was, like, definitely, you know. We're learning so much about each other. There you go. So much. To, <laughs> and uh, we hope you, the audience, are as well. Uh, <laughs> That does it for us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you all back here tomorrow.